Welcome to Friday Night's Video in our Master Series. This is the 94th video in our Master Series and the 8th video in our subgroup mixing. That basically, we already went through basically what I want to cover dealing with out front tracks as far as some techniques of dealing with them. In the first video that we went through, the workflow and the checklist in the first, first video in the subgroup mixing, we basically kind of went through a simple process for you to start working on getting yourself your own workflow and checklist put together. The basic concept of actually mixing them together is not that difficult. The The problem you come into when you get into more tracks on out front tracks, like if you have three tracks, you know, if you have three tracks, normally that centered track is going to be a little bit louder, at least a half a dB louder than the ones that are panned right and left. If you've got four tracks, that normally two of them are going to be a little bit louder than the other two, so the other two can sit back a little bit, a half dB or a dB below it. And if you got something like five tracks you're dealing with, that you've got that centered track is going to be louder than the other four tracks. And you might have two of them that are 50 right and left or 75 right and left, a little bit less than the out front one, and then the other two even a little bit less than that, even just by half a dB or something. It adds a little bit of depth to it. So, but... It's a pretty simple concept of turning the knob up a little bit, you know, and making them to where that they mix out really well, especially with out front tracks that we're talking about, that it's not that difficult, difficult a concept. The biggest things you really want to keep in mind is, first of all, trust your ears. And after you get done, you know, understanding to trust your ears and really work on them, that your tools, you know, to really see fine detail, your spectrum meters, you know, are going to really, you know, running running one track into it you know or two tracks and then side chaining you have the other track going out to main and side chaining it in so that you can listen to that one also you know somewhere you know side chaining on your spectrometer or your scope you know this one's in yellow and blue and it's really showing you know percentage or db levels so i can really see if there's any differences happening because one of the tracks are going to be in process a little bit different or use a different microphone or whatever I've done to it, then I might have to make adjustments, you know, and these things will really help you to be able to do that well. Your equalizers are great for that. I mean, your your EQs do an awesome job of that. You can see this is side-chained blue and purple, and you can really see seriously minute difference in levels across the spectrum. So I haven't done over a lot of different processing on this one because I was just doing it for, you know, the series, but because I didn't go through it, I had just doubled this track. But if you had, you might see some differences in the low end or differences in the high end that as you mix it together, besides trusting your ears, you can really get in there and see that, well, this other microphone's a little brass here, so the high end's up a little higher. And the, on this microphone, this other microphone, that uh, it's a little, you know, warmer. So it, down in here, some of the harmonics and stuff are a little bit louder. And you can kind of see that happening besides just listening to it to really help you kind of mix those things together. And just really trust your ears and really trust your meters. You know, I love my isotope stuff, you know, my isotope stuff for seeing this stuff, because especially stuff like this, I can really start adjusting this and going, I'm listening to it and I'm seeing it. What am I hearing that it's not blending right? You know, most of the time, a lot of this stuff, you're not dealing with a mono track or just a stereo track. And so you're really going to be able to see, hear them. They're both out to the side, but coming into the plug-in, it's centering it out. And so they, it doesn't have anything to do with that. It's just dealing with the frequency field. And so you can really, besides, because you start messing with some of these techniques and it starts messing with your perception of what side might be louder because of difference in the, the way the audio has been sculpted and EQ'd and delays and all kinds of things, you detunings and all kinds of things to really help you let your meters help you you might hear well the other side seems a little bit louder you know but my meters tell me it's not and you know the lower end is louder on this one and the higher end is louder on this one because of the way that i've sculpted it or i've eq'd it or whatever to make it sound a little bit different and you'll be able to see it to help you uh, you know visualize it and it's so that you know, and, and remember to walk away. Sometimes you'll be listening, you're just like, oh, dude, I don't know, you know, and just get up and walk away. You know, come back, give it a few minutes. Go, you know, have yourself, you know, a, a, you know, a cup of coffee or, you know, a glass of water or, you know, some lunch or whatever. Get away from it for, you know, 15, 20 minutes, a half an hour or something, and then come back and look at it. 
but remember to use both your tools. They're phenomenal tools to help you, you know, work through that. But most of this out front mixing is pretty simple of bringing their levels up most of the time to where they're even or you're building, you know, that pyramid kind of effect, but very small increments of differences when you're dealing with a lot of tracks to build, you know, a wider stereo field or you're trying to do a much more complex kind of thing. And it's a pretty simple concept. So in, in the subgroup mixing, we're not really mixing other stuff together as far as when we're dealing with out front tracks. So normally it's a pretty simple process. So really take that to heart and go back and watch the first video in the subgroup mixing to kind of refresh yourself on that to start working out your own checklist and things like that. And the other thing I wanted to talk about really quick is when some of the biggest things when we're talking about chain making a difference between one track and another or something like that you know between one microphone one really nice microphone and another real nice nice microphone normally the biggest difference you have between those two and they're both great sound microphones is harmonic content which i recommend trash too and if you look at my sound sculpting series in this master series that i definitely recommended it to help you do sound sculpting It'll definitely be most of the times a little bit different harmonic content from even or not harmonics and or equalization. So those are the two main things that you're going to run into that are the difference between two really nice microphones. And it's a preference thing. Some people might have things a little brighter or like things a little warmer and darker. And that might change because of how you might want a production of sound. But that don't mean you can't do some of that same work on a double track or in a different take with a different microphone to try to get the best of both worlds. One of them you might ride a little bit lower. So that is a problem also because sometimes you might run into that and you go, well, yeah, but that's not really working out. And so basically what you've done is you've, instead of having two tracks, that you've you've basically done a couple things. You've either put one center in mono and then you've put two of these tracks that sound a little bit different, doubled them and brought them way down in volume because they're darker and warmer than this out front brassy one. And you've left it like that. And it sounds great, but it sounds a little mono. But you bring those other two double tracks of that warmer sound that you've put together up underneath it that's going to with the delays and detunings and things like that. So because it's it's not having the effect you want because you're really wanting to go with this preference of a brassier sound. But it would be nice to have a little more richer tones back up underneath it to really give it a little bit more body and richness and fullness, you know, and, you know, and things like that. And that's one. There's a few ways you can deal with that, but that's one way to do it. You can also double tracks. You can double the track that the one that you really like and not work on it, work on detunings and delays on it. And then, you know, on the other one, that's a different microphone, double that track or sculpt one a little bit different. That's a little bit warmer and darker. And the other one, you know, double that. And you can have them like, let's say an example, one would be 75 right and left of the ones you really like. And the other ones are out there farther or they're in closer at 50% right and left. And you've done some of that work also, but you brought the volume way down back behind it. The problem is when you're doing that kind of work, sometimes you have to bring the level of that group up a little bit more above the rest of the mix where you wouldn't really have to in some of the applications so that the actual depth of that is perceived by the listener and doesn't get lost in the mix. So really keep that in mind. And when I was talking about re-EQing things, like let's say you've went through here and you've done some EQ work and you've only used like the out, you started out with the equal loudness contour at about 40% of those changes. And you went back and you've really just, you've dropped down the lower end a little bit, you know, just so it's not quite so rich and thick or you've boosted the upper end or right up here in here where that normal boost is as far as equal loudness contour is concerned, you've dropped it or raised it just a little bit or dropped this one or raised it a little bit, you know, go look at the EQing that I talked about. And some slight differences are the differences between two really great microphones. Sometimes it's not, sometimes it's not much. You'll have a little bit of difference between these areas and levels. And sometimes you might have an oddball frequency range where it's getting boosted or attenuated on some certain microphone that it's basically it's frequency envelope that makes it have its unique sound. But most of the time, those are the things that cause the sound to sound great anyway. And so you want to start out focusing on those areas first. 
and then focus on changing things with a little bit of different even or odd harmonics. So, you know, it's a very simple concept, you know, most of the time, any of those things I'm mixing that these, those are some of the things besides just trying to get them evil level, you know, and even level, you know, and, you know, as they go into the subgroup bus or something, it's a very simple concept. And, and those are some of the things you might run into that might be problematic. And all the other things, we talked about mixing concepts for you to go to review, and we talked about them in subgroup processing. We talked a lot about delays and detunings and things like that at the end of the first phase processing. So go back and take a look at those if you have any questions or you didn't make good notes about them or you need to refresh your memory. So peace, up, love. I hope you enjoyed this short series in our subgroup mixing on out front tracks and out front vocals and lead instruments and things like that i'll see you in the next video when we start dealing with support tracks and backing tracks but first before we do that we are going to deal with an issue of single tracks that you want to have a little bit wire stereo field so stay tuned for that video is coming up next see you in the next video